Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco, Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and I am here today to continue talking about long legs. And this is because I noticed there were a couple of flaws in my review of things that I was mistaken about. And also there were a few things that I was confused about that I kind of thought about and and came up with some conclusions. And so I wanted to discuss these points and just clarify that the movie is still fucking terrible. Okay. First off, there was something I didn't get to mention, and that was that they constantly cut to the shot of snakes throughout the movie, like constantly. They used the image of snakes in this old-fashioned image of like the satanic pentagram to make you to try to like scare you and it's almost like again like this movie treats you like a child like in terms of like oh look isn't that oh look a cutaway picture of snakes isn't that scary it's like no it's not scary at all like the the opening like theme sequences of american horror story seasons are scarier than this uh even if someone has, like, a really bad fear of snakes, what is cutting to a picture of snakes for three seconds really going to do for someone? Now, I will say, it's funny because even though this movie is bad, and though Borderlands was bad, for both movies, I had some very vivid dreams after watching each movie. Uh, For this one, I dreamed that I was, like... I don't know, like, first off, I was in some kind of investigation, and then all of a sudden, I was in some kind of prison camp with these weird-looking people, and then there was this part where all the people in the prison camp were going to do something, or there was also, like, a shopping trip in amongst that. I don't even know, but it was really weird, and it was very, very, like, I don't know, it, it, it just felt like, it, it, that's what happens when you like watch a movie so close to bedtime is that like the movie influences your dreams and then there's this part where i was like i need to go to the bathroom or i need to take a shower or something and then all of a sudden this really creepy looking blonde haired like skinny she was almost like a twig she was like a zombie woman or a witch or something and she came in the bathroom and or it was like a guy or something. It was really, really creepy. It was almost like a humanoid type of creature. And uh, it was so much scarier than Long Legs was in the movie. And I felt like if they had made Long Legs look like this, the movie would have been really creepy, because guess what happened? She, she or he stripped off their clothes, and... Uh, they had, like, these long, skinny legs, and they had this short, like, midsection. It it just, it, it was so weird and gross-looking. It almost looked like an insect. And so it was like, I don't know what that was. It was maybe, like, me being, like, ima- as imaginative as I am. Maybe I was, like, creating my own version of long legs in the dream. I have no idea. But that was really weird, And then what happened was, like, I wanted to get out of the bathroom as quickly as possible. Because what it did was it stared at me, like, when it came in. And it almost looked like this girl that I knew in elementary school. Uh, But I don't think it was supposed to be her. I don't know. It was real. She was really creepy looking, too. And, uh, ugh. You, You know what I mean? But she stared at me. And then she comes in there. And she takes, or he or she or it, takes all of its clothes off. It didn't have any genitalia. It was like a creature thing. And then it it put on the shower and it went into one of the shower rooms. And after that, I was basically sneaking out of the bathroom. And there was this long hallway. And I kept on wanting to laugh because the creature was also kind of hilarious looking, but still creepy. And every time I made, like, any little noise, it started to rage out and start yelling, 
almost like it was, like, trying to, like, threaten me, and it was making these, like, really creepy noises, and, and so finally I was able to escape the hallway, but I was, like, really wanting to laugh or something, and so, honestly, like, that was creepier than the entire movie that I watched yesterday, and then with Borderlands, I had a really, really nice dream, but I'm not even going to share that one, because that one was too, is too long, uh, that's what she said, you know, but it was a really, really fun dream, even though that was, like, the worst movie of the year, and this movie was pretty bad, too, so isn't that weird, guys, like, I'll give it credit, is that, like, a lot of movies nowadays, they really don't stick with you, they really don't leave any impression on you at all, um, so, yeah, now let's get back to the bad movie, first off, Apparently that guy was not her partner. He's the police chief or he's the, the FBI chief or something. He's her boss. That makes it even worse because he acted like a partner. He never acted like he was a boss of anything. He acted like he was like her stupid idiot partner who just kind of provided some exposition like that's another thing that they do nowadays is that, like, any male character in any position of power or anything, anywhere, all of them act like idiots. And all of them, no matter what, they all act like they're on the same level of stupidity. And so it really didn't help in this movie because, honestly, I, he was one of the stupidest characters in the movie. And in Silence of the Lambs, you know, Mr. Crawford, I can't, uh, Jack Crawford, he was a really smart guy. He was very helpful. Uh, I think there was only one time in the movie where he kind of acted a little weird towards Clarice, but like, he was very helpful to her for the most part. He was not an idiot. He didn't just provide exposition. And also, if you think about Mr. Crawford, he wasn't shy on the details. You know, he wouldn't have been like, oh, and I can't talk about the children. You just have to look at that in the file. <laughs> you know, like, uh, so, again, when you make a movie like this where it's like a copy of another movie, all you're doing is inviting people to compare those movies. You know, Another thing that I t another thing that I would like to say is that I don't think it was a necessarily a badly made movie. I think that I would definitely watch other movies that Osgood Perkins did based on this movie. It's just that this movie completely fell flat for me. It completely was not anything that I thought was good. Uh but I did think it was well made. Like I thought that the cinematography was fine. I thought that you know the music was pretty good it was it was pretty good at, at leaving a creepy impression on you and and, and creating a mood however th this is also a problem that i have with music sometimes is that a lot of the times with songs and movies nowadays they just start at one mood and they just continue that throughout the entire movie and so there's never any break, there's never any point to where they're like, okay, let's go here, let's go down there. You know, that's why I was saying that, like, in Twin Peaks, there's all these happy, light moments, there's all these, all this joy in Twin Peaks, there's all this goofy, lightheartedness to be found in such a dark show. And when you, when you do that, you're able to gr create what's called a contrast, and in this movie, there's no contrast at all. All it is, from beginning to end, is just dark, 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 dark. And the main character doesn't do it any favors. That's something else that I'll say, is that, like, I'll, I'll give you guys another example of a great thing. Uh, Heavy Rain, the video game. In that game, you have the dad whose son was kidnapped by the bad guy. You have this uh, girl who's like a, 
I can't remember what she was, actually. She's the love interest, and she was kind of like the sad girl or something. I can't even remember. But then you had the private investigator who, spoiler alert, he turns out to be the bad guy, uh, which was like the biggest twist because the entire movie, I mean, the entire video game, he's such a likable character, and he's a character that you want to play as. He's a character that you want to follow because he's very heroic, he's very likable, he's very charismatic, and uh, that's what helps that game. You don't just play as the depressed, sad dad the entire game. That would be too depressing. You play as uh, the private investigator guy, Mr. Uh, Selby, or Shelby, or whatever. And then the woman, who... Was kind of, she was kind of like Catwoman, I guess. She was kind of like a a co co investigator with uh, the dad or whatever. But anyways, that's my point. Is that, like this movie, it it created one mood and it just stuck with that mood. Even in Halloween, even in Halloween, you know, you have that Halloweeny mood. But there are still moments of like lightness. There's still moments that are really fun, like. Remember that part in Halloween where Dr. Loomis scares the kids uh, next to the Myers house? Remember that? You know, like, moments like that would never have happened in this movie because it was so busy trying to be dark and depressing and satanic. And that's another thing is that, like, this movie is only scary... If, if you're scared of this type of horror, if you're scared of Satanism, if you're scared of this type of... And I'm really not, because that's all Hollywood does nowadays, is put Satanism in every single thing that they do. I mean, they have all this shitty-ass music, too, where it's just Satanism nonstop. And it's like, there really isn't anything else to be afraid of anymore, because it's all been done. And so... That's another thing is that, like, I feel like if you were to make Satanism scary in a movie, you need to create kind of like a safe, comforting world where you think, oh, this could never happen in a world like this. This is such a nice world. This is such a nice environment. And then, boom, they pull the rug out from under you halfway through or something. You know, something like that. But instead... It's almost like in this movie, like, everyone is a serial killer. Like, you walk down the street and there's, like, ten houses. Like, all of them have different serial killers in them and uh, child molesters and shit. Like, there's nothing good happening in this world, basically. Like, because uh, the main character, she can't even smile for more than, like, 30 seconds in the entire fucking movie. Uh And I don't care if, you, if you're saying, like, oh, you're not allowed to say that, Marco. I don't give a fuck. Okay, like, this character was terrible. Lee was terrible, period. And so th there's also this argument that she was at, she looked constipated the entire movie, almost, because that ball in the doll of hers was controlling her. But here are several things with that. It's like, okay, why was that doll made to control her, kept alive for this whole period of time? Was it so that they could control the investigation? Was that the reason why? And if they were so confident in controlling the investigation with her using that doll, then why did they feel the need to terrorize her mentally and emotionally? Like where Long Legs is saying like, Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! And why, and why did they break into her house and leave the letter that she never turns into her superiors, by the way? Like, that was like a huge clue, huge piece of evidence. Uh, God, that was so bizarre and retarded. Uh, but, like, why did they feel the need to terrorize her if they're already controlling her and she's under a spell? And also, just because she's under a spell doesn't mean jack shit for her acting. She acted like she was constipated the entire movie. She acted like she she was like a popsicle with like a stick rammed all the way up in there 
which was like the that was like the explanation for like the deep breathing that she was doing. She was like, <gasps> <laughs> that's another thing too. Like, you think about the killer, like. Is is it really making her look like a badass character for her to be going <laughs> when she's confronting the killer like all the time, like when she's got to go after him and chase after them? Like, does that really make her scary and intimidating and like she's a formidable FBI agent? Because that's what I mean. She wasn't a believable FBI agent at all. And uh, but yeah, like. For them to have to control the investigation like that, too, it doesn't make any sense either because it's like this whole journey was basically them wanting her to figure out what was going on. But why? There's no reasoning to it at all. There's no reasoning for her to have figured everything out and have to witness all of that at the end. There's no reason. What was the reason? The mom never said, like, I want you to join me. I want you to help me. Or I want you to realize that I'm sacrificing all this for you and killing all these people. And I just want you to know and be grateful or something. She never said that at all. <coughs> all she said was, like, I'm going to keep killing people until I'm standing on an ocean and I see the devil rise up out of the ocean or some bullshit, you know, and then after that, at the end, when the mom gets killed, there's no horror after that at all. It's like there's no supernatural consequences or anything. Like the thing with long legs where he was like, I'm going to be I'm going to be here in prison and I'm going to be out there, too, because he killed himself. So he's like a ghost. But like, where does he go? And, like, there's no evidence of him going anywhere and doing anything. Like, he doesn't possess anyone, like in The Exorcist, where uh, Pazuzu possesses the, the father, Karis, at the end, after he exorcises the spirit of the demon out of uh, Reagan's body. You know, like, there's no moment like that. That could have actually been really effective and creepy if at the end of the movie, Longlegs jumps into Lee's body and then controls her and makes her let the whole family get killed or something. That would have been a lot scarier. That would have been a lot more more horrifying because then it would have been a better excuse for why she just stands there like a dumbass. So that's another thing, is that after the ball gets destroyed or after the doll gets destroyed, Lee doesn't act any differently at all. And again, even if she was acting that way because she was under a spell that doesn't excuse the fact that like her character isn't likable her character is one of the worst characters i have ever seen in movie history uh it would have been so much more effective if she acted normally so that you wouldn't suspect that there's something going on with her uh and also you think about she has these psychic powers so a lot of her weird behavior could be attributed to that. You know, it could be attributed to, like, not feeling well and feeling off because I've had plenty of moments like that. Like, I told you guys how after I met someone from my past life in person, uh, I felt, like, this horrible depression for, like, an entire two or three hours, and I felt like I was completely out of it. And so, like, that's totally believable, but, like, I was still the same person that I am. I wasn't like a zombie, boring drone woman. And so I get the whole thing with the balls controlling people, but I still think it's fucking retarded. There's no explanation for it. It's basically just kind of like a Twin Peaks type of thing, like where they take the little balls and they, they turn those people into tulpas. I'm, or I mean, they turn the balls into tulpas or whatever. That's what it reminded me of. But like, yeah stupid just stupid 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 and by the way like apparently Nicolas Cage was supposed to look like the dolls that he made yeah that wasn't a good idea honestly <sighs> Nicolas Cage was wasted in this movie he was wasted he wasn't really a character I mean, tell me one thing about that Long Legs character. 
besides the fact that he makes dolls and he's really, really good at making dolls and that he's a Satanist and a bad guy, tell me one thing about his character. Like the thing with the Manson comparison, he's nothing like Charles Manson. Okay, like that whole comparison, that is fucking retarded. This is a completely, this is a supernatural character. And there's no anything about him. There's no backstory. There's no explanation. It's just this weird, creepy, but hilarious character that you just can't stop laughing at. And that was the point, too. Because at first I was like, okay, maybe this movie is going to be good. But as soon as he he talked and as soon as he was like, (laughs) or he jumps out at the little girl, I started laughing. I was like, (laughs) are you serious? (laughs) And then after that, I was like, okay, this movie is getting special attention. So again, like, I hope I didn't miss anything because I know that my review, I was just very confused. I mean, the whole movie was so bad. Uh, sometimes I just, I completely zone out and I just don't get what's going on, even though it can be a little bit obvious. Uh, and then afterwards I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And so I don't think there's anything else to say. Fuck Lee Harker. That's for damn sure. And that's another thing. Like guys, like I've told you guys before, every single final girl looks and acts like Lee Harker. Every single one. They all have the same face. They could basically all be portrayed by the same actress, too. Like, even in the short movie that I made in high school, I made this horrible short movie. It's probably one of the worst things that I've ever seen or done at all. Uh, It's horrible. And the main girl... She really wanted to be, like, the main character of the movie. So I kind of wrote it around what the people in my group wanted to do. And she was so confident that she could be this, like, final girl-type character. And what do you know? She makes the same constipated face the entire fucking short movie. Even at the end of the movie, she's, like, got this depressed, constipated face. And it's like... That's what all final girls, for some reason, feel like they have to do. They can't be like normal human beings. They have to be this joyless, soulless creatures who act like they're under a spell, who act like just really, really weird. But I will say, I think that this Make make a Mom Road Girl, Micah, Micah, is a good actress, regardless uh, she she put a lot of effort into being terrible, uh, which takes a lot of effort, you know. I mean, she was clearly a good actress. So I hope that I can see her in a better movie uh, so that I get to like her more. Because right now, honestly, like, th- th- this has to be, like, one of the top ten worst characters in horror movie history. Uh, right down there with that stupid final girl from the Terrifier series... You know, the one who has superpowers and she still looks constipated. Uh, But anyway, (laughs) anyways, please like this video and comment. And then please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more honest videos. Bye bye.